to this special report. I'm Miranda Conigan. David Brody has the week off. We're going to look at a few of your responses coming up on our Gitter chat. Hell Bill says, I like this new lineup. Thank you, and we like you. And Liz H. says, do pro-abortionists realize that they are here because their mothers choose life? Good question. And C. Rob, or, well, I'm going to go with that. C. Rob 7, if I didn't say it right, correct me. Did she actually pause before she let the woman word pop out of her mouth? Very good. And uh, let's see, is that Elio B. Ultra Maga XL? There you go. Rav people, real voices. That's right. We are about real voices. Speaking of which, uh, our network is about you. That's why it's called Real America's Voice. So we want to show off your beautiful faces and your beautiful voices. So in order to do that, we need your help. You need to submit some videos. Uh, you could do that by following us and joining the Rav family at Gitter. The question we are asking is, what does America need to do to get on track? So let your voice be heard. We'd love to hear from you. All right. It seems the GOP is making some major strides in attempting to make America pro-family again. Republicans say they are now working on taking a look at paid family leave, which in the past has been a part of the Democratic Party's platform. Now, according to Axios, quote, their meaning, meaning Republicans, are more interested in policies that wouldn't raise spending, which borrow from Social Security funds, foster the creation of new kinds of private leave insurance, or provide tax credits. One of those proposals, Rubio's pro-family framework, features an expansion of the child care tax credit to include unborn children, more funding for benefits for parents, and a paid family leave proposal he floated back way back in 2018, in fact, with Ivanka Trump. Uh, this is especially timely now, obviously, that Roe v. Wade was just overturned. Back with us once again, Turning Point USA contributor, host of Freedom Papers, Morgan Zieger, CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, and consultant Caroline Winchester. Ladies, thank you for sticking around. So, dying to know your thoughts about this. Uh, Melissa, you're, you've been smiling, so uh, are you happy? Does this make you happy? I think it's a great idea. I'm, I'm not sure why they didn't get this done during the Trump administration, but they should have had this for a long, long, long time. They should have it for men, they should have it for women, they should have it for mothers or fathers, um, and, and maybe something will actually get done. What do, you, what do you think, Caroline? I see you like nodding your head there. I mean, we're, we're seeing, uh, especially that it's harder than ever, it seems, for a big family, at least in Joe Biden's inflated economy, uh, could this possibly allow for bigger families to exist? Because according to recent stats, the birth rate in the U.S. just declined by 4%. That's its lowest point ever. So could this kind of help be a solution there? Yeah, you know, I feel like it's time for the, the RNC and conservatives, the GOP, I think we got to put our money where our mouth is. And for years we've been saying, we got to appeal Roe v. Wade. We want to encourage people to have big families. I think the, the big thing on social media recently has been be rebellious, have a lot of kids, raise them right. This is how we defeat the enemy. And I think in order to do that, um, I look at so many of my girlfriends, they and their husbands, they're, they're starting families and they're like, oh, is now a good time? Groceries are so expensive. We'll have to get a new car. We can't find a new right. car. Yeah. Got to stay in the workforce. And I think if there was an opportunity for women to feel like they were valued in their jobs and that they could take the time off to have their babies and enjoy that time with them, that bonding time for mothers and fathers, and then go back to work. I think young women would be so much more inclined to have a family, have more than one child, more than two, yeah. because it, it takes some of that pressure away. So Morgan, are you thinking about having a child now? Speaking of young oh. women right now, hearing that from Caroline, she's like, wait, don't rush me, don't rush me. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I mean, I'm 25 and I actually can't wait for that phase. I'm patient about it, but I am really looking forward to it. I love education. I love family policy and most importantly, culture, which is a a very big issue when it comes to young Americans these days. We don't really encourage young people to get excited about that phase of life, unfortunately. And I would say when we're talking about being pro-family, yes, it is really important, I would say, for conservatives to step up and be talking about policy solutions after Roe v. Wade. But it's also really important to get back to the basics, I think. And maybe it's out of touch right now. But idealistically, I would really love if we could encourage young women to understand that it's okay to want to prioritize motherhood. And I would say on top of that, to be a conservative and be in favor of a strong economy, it's really, really empowering for women that maybe don't want to do that corporate nine to five boss babe phase of life. Maybe they want to be a family woman and have a lot of kids and be more at home, but have a side job or have a contract kind of job. Or have some flexibility and be able to do all of it you know women do have you know unfortunately they they have a a deadline when it comes Mm -hmm. to that that guys don't face and and women that that's a constant struggle that a lot of women deal with you know can I be a good mom can I be a good employee can I be a good wife and then they feel like and I've got to figure all of this out by x amount of age because well my eggs are getting old and if they feel like maybe they get some support maybe that will that will help right Yeah, I would say to our modern economy, it empowers women to be able to have more flexible options. I mean, you don't have to just stay home and be in the kitchen like the the leftists try to tell you that's what conservative. Although I like being in the kitchen, but I hear you. (laughs) I I know what you meant. I personally love it, but I get that other people want to be more involved in the economy. They want to be and have a job. And thankfully now with a strong American capitalist economy, we're able to do those things. But like our other panelists were saying, unless our economy is booming and our country is strong and safe and secure, families are going to struggle. Well, so here's the key though. How do you do it? Because that's where this is kind of stopped, right? I mean, we're what? Only, what is it? A handful of, I think it's like six countries in, in the world that don't allow don't have this kind of option available and we're obviously we have record inflation we're here seeing numbers that we haven't seen in what 40 something years Melissa so how do we give women the opportunity to do this at a time when we're struggling I mean going to Caroline's point where they're worried about um, being able to afford just basic things how they're going I can't even think about having a kid right now and and how do we as taxpayers support women and businesses into doing this how do we pay for it I don't think this is a, a necessarily a current problem I think this is that women have changed over the last 20 30 40 50 years women have become much more independent like when my mother you know was was raising us she was a stay-at-home mom and then obviously then things change. It was the eighties, it was the nineties, then yeah. and women were going back to work. And now now things are turning another corner. So uh, you know, women are in, in different phases all the time. And not all women are the same. Uh, not yeah. all women have the same goals, you know, and so and women are always trying to find themselves. I think there's pressure on men too. You know, yeah. men are always the pressure to be the breadwinner as well, and women can be the breadwinner too. And then women have to juggle raising the kids and also, you know, taking care of the family. But you were talking right. about buying a car and groceries. You know, people have to be able to afford to buy a three, four, five bedroom house too, you know, if yeah. their family is as well. And that is something that people are going to see. I mean, Elon Musk has talked about this. I think he's trying to populate another planet with all of his kids. I mean, he's talked about, <laughs> he's talked about that a lot. But, I mean, I think it has to do with the fact that women uh, and way women are – more career oriented now in the last right. 20, 30 years is a lot different than it was in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. And in the, in the 70s was when women started breaking out and they said, yeah, we want to be more empowered and we want to have more freedom. Yeah. And then they yeah. to work longer and they didn't want to be tied down to staying at home and taking care of kids. So women are going through, there's different women doing different things. But I mean, obviously, you know, it has to do with if you find a partner too. If you're not falling in love and you're not meeting someone and getting married, then obviously, who are you going to have a kid with? <laughs> yeah. Well, it does seem like it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting and and maybe a, a good strategic move uh, for the Republican Party to make this as uh, many on the other side of the aisle are struggling to even define again what a woman is. Uh, but I do appreciate you women. Uh, joining us here on this special report. Uh, Loved hearing your voices. Please share 
with us again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and again, for real Americans that are watching right now, weigh in. Let us know your thoughts.